Thank you so much for being a Patreon member and supporting me on my Patreon channel. This helps us to bring videos to you all about soil health and the most nutritious food ever. Share this with your friends and family. I'm making a commercial. <laughs> okay, today here's what we're going to do. This shovel is one of the best tools to understand your soil health, which means plant health, which translates into human health. So if you want to be healthy, come with me. Let's dig a little and we'll learn a lot. I, I stole that from a soil scientist. It was probably Ray Archuleta. Let's go. <laughs> One of the first things we want to ask is where should we dig? You need to dig everywhere to understand your soil. But we had a place where we didn't penetrate one inch and we were hitting 300 pounds. And it was right here where we were looking at these peppers and then we stuck the pen penetrometer in right there. There's a whole other video about this. But that little hole is where the penetrometer tried to go in. We were hitting 300 pounds at the surface. So we need to see what's going on. So we're gonna take this shovel and we are going to dig down in here so i'm a fat guy and i can't even get that shovel to go in by jumping on it i'm like 200 and something pounds probably 240 pounds and i can't get this shovel to go down in which is showing me that i have a compacted soil i already knew i had a compacted soil because we used the penetrometer but you don't need a penetrometer this is how you do it with the shovel. If you have a good, sharp, sturdy shovel that's gonna go in the soil good, then, and you're jumping on it with a lot of weight, and, you, and it's not plunging in all the way really well, you have compaction for sure. So that's the first thing we have learned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this out, and we're gonna look at it. So I'm working it down in there. Okay, here it comes. So we're going to tip this over. Okay, first thing that I see. See how this is cracking in layers? I have a crack right through here. It's cracking. I have another crack right there. I had the crack right here where this piece fell off of that piece. When you get layering like that, that is a classic sign of a soil that is compacted. So we have compact, compaction problems with this soil. So we're just gonna get down in here and we're gonna see what we can learn. I just wanna remove some of this dirt. When what I should be seeing, if it was a good soil, are big pieces of cottage cheese. Like big, the whole thing should look like big lumps of cottage cheese. I'm not seeing that. What I'm seeing is a soil that looks like it's been tilled up with a rotor tiller. And that is not what you want. See how this is really fine and loose. This is the type of dirt that people, after they till, they feel this and they're like, oh, that's so fertile and wonderful. Because it is fun to play with. So now I'm going to do the second thing. I'm going to smell this. So here we go. I'm going to smell it right here. Now I'm going to smell it from down deep, down in here. It smells sweet. It has a sweet smell. It, it does not have a rotten egg smell. It does not have a sewer smell. It does not have a, an ammonia smell. So it doesn't smell stinky. So that's good. If it did smell stinky, that would be telling us that there were a lot of disease-causing organisms in it. So it passes the smell test. It smells fine. It does have kind of a sweet smell. And so that's good. That's fine. Now let's look for the five spheres. First of all, let's look right here. I'm, not, I'm trying not to break this up. But on the very... And it's breaking up. When it breaks up that easy, you know you have compaction. Ugh. Okay, it completely fell apart. <laughs> I was trying to be careful with it. It completely fell apart. That tells us we have no soil structure. That means if the water came rushing over this... It, the particles would go away. This would erode away if it was in your yard. 
um, as the wind blows, it will blow this away. Nothing is holding it together. But, so let's look for the five spheres. That's why I was moving it before. We want to look at the top because we want to look at the detritus sphere. How thick is our detritus sphere on top? Well, it's almost zero. Let's just look where I didn't dig. Look right here. See right there? What do we see right here? It's mostly dirt. We have one little chickweed trying to grow right here. We have a, a clover. But really, there's nothing there. So there's no detritus sphere. Why isn't there a detritus sphere? It's because I didn't put enough compost on here. So it is my fault from poor management that this soil is nearly dead and compacted. All right. The other thing, the other indicator is we have moss growing on here. When you have moss growing on the soil, you know that you are in the state, the very earliest stages of succession. Our community dynamics is very, very small. It's a very small community here. And the earliest succession plants are one celled algaes and mosses and lichens. And so this is the this is the very beginning when soil very first forms and we have a nice healthy moss here it's trying to cover the ground and as it dies it will start to feed bacteria it will feed the uh fungus and then the protozoa will eat those and then microarthropods come in later but we're talking about maybe decades to get to that point so this soil is not functioning this is horrible but let me tell you something. See this, see this, see this stick right here? <laughs> this was a big, beautiful pepper plant. And there's videos on this Patreon library of me planting these peppers. Now, this pepper here, it produced big, beautiful, wonderful peppers in the worst soil ever. So it's not that you can't grow food, but you need to do things to the soil. And if you go back and watch those videos, you will see that I drilled a hole here and then I put a couple of tablespoons of different kinds of fertilizer in here. And I put in uh, eggshells, bone meal, alfalfa meal, azomite, and something else. Anyway, I, I add all this stuff, probably some blood meal. I add all this stuff to fertilize them because I know my soil isn't where it needs to be yet but it will get there so where we tested this being 300 pounds no root can penetrate is what purdue tells us but are there roots down in here let's look at the side of this hole there are roots in here look right here see these roots in here mm -hmm. okay which direction are these going sideways they're coming in sideways so remember when we first tipped this up and we saw all the lines that were breaking sideways in, in this soil, that's just like a rock, as <laughs> hard as it can be. So we do have some rhizosphere here. Anytime you see a bust like it just did, that's compaction. Shouldn't have done that. So we do have some rhizosphere. There are roots in there, but they are not going straight down the way they should. They're going in any hole they can find. Now, there's a little hole here. That looks like a wormhole. So there is a drillosphere here. But there's no agrotosphere. I have no aggregates. There's no porosphere because there's no space between aggregates because there's no aggregates. It's just solid. And But here's my rhizosphere. My detritosphere is basically just whatever's growing natural. I haven't put anything on here. I should have six inches of wood chips or, or compost. Let me try to break this apart. Here it comes apart. And it should be crumbling. It, we see how when I break it, it's showing these lines. That's a sign of compaction. If it was not compacted right where I put my thumb, if it was a healthy soil, it would have just crumbled right where my thumb was. And it wouldn't have had that line going through it. Okay. We already knew it was bad, but they, these are some of the things you look for in a soil test. Let's go to a place where we have a detritus sphere on top of the soil where we were going down like um, 
13, 13 inches. There were quite a few places where it was 13 inches. Most of the places I have food growing, so I don't want to dig up the food. But right here, right here it went in over a foot, didn't it? Mm -hmm. so, so what I've created here, I've created a, a detritus sphere here. This is where I had my basil growing. But if you look right here, let's just look at this circle right here. So I brought in um, four to six inches of compost and we put on this entire bed in this section of the bed. My students from my 17 week course did that. Okay, so look right here. This is a mushroom that's blooming right there. See that? So that's some type of a fungus. And I don't know the species, but there it is. And it's not really alive, it's dried up, but it was in this detritus sphere. And as we look closely in here, you can see all the little, I'm gonna get that on the palm of my hand. See how they're all little balls? Now those are earthworm poops. Those are all castings. Most of that has come through an earthworm. And that has created macro aggregates so that, and then between them, you can see the spaces between all those. That's the porous sphere. It's the pores between them. So we have an agrotosphere here. It's right here. So I'm going to try to pick this up. You see all the little pieces of cottage cheese looking stuff. So here we have, um, we do have a detritus sphere because it's all the dead, decaying organic matter. And so that's what the sticks and, and decomposing things are. We have the agrotosphere, which are the aggregates, the porosphere, which is the spaces between them, the rhizosphere, which are all these roots. You can see the living roots right there that are still white. And then we have, uh, we do have earthworms, but we're on the surface, so we're not really seeing the earthworm hole. So I'm going to move this back gently. And as we're going down, okay. This is an earthworm right there. See that little guy? Mm -hmm. It's a little baby earthworm right there. Yeah, that's the whole thing. He's just a little feller. So that's a complete full baby earthworm. So there's an earthworm there. And here's his older brother. So there's an earthworm there. So I'm not really seeing earthworm holes yet because it is so soft that they're collapsing as my fingers come across. But this is looking pretty good. Now let's just do another test next to it. And so we're going to look right here. And I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to poke it in. And it's getting pretty hard to push it right there. But I'm going in a couple of inches. And you can't do this over here where we've been walking. This is where we've been walking. And I'm pushing, pushing, pushing as hard as I can. Nothing happens. But over here it does go in. And it's because the earthworms are keeping it aerated. Now let's move back this new detritus sphere that I put on top. All this compostable material. I'm just going to move this back. And just see what we can see. So something was moving right here. There's a lot of movement right here. So here's a beetle. So that's a macro arthropod. Um, look at my hand over here. Look at those spiders. So there are little spiders everywhere. This big old giant beetles charging around. Actually, it's a small beetle, but... And then there's a whole bunch of earthworms right here. So if we just move that over... Yeah, so there's one, two, three, four, five earthworms just right there. I'm just going to dig down in here, kind of deep. We're going to pull this across and just see what we can see. Okay, so down in there, there's some wood chips that were on the bottom of that. All right, so let's get the shovel going really fast. And we're just going to compare this to the other place. Okay, it almost went all the way in with a foot. That wasn't even my fat belly jumping on this thing with lots of weight to push it down. So that was just a normal push with my foot and it's going right in. So do I have compaction? Probably down in there, but not right here. So just, oh yeah, went and look kind of like butter, you know. And that's what you want. So now we're going to try to lift this out in one piece. 
Okay, so my detritus here fell off, but it was about three inches thick. And then underneath where I get to this other color, this is the original uh, dirt that's down in there, but it's not compacted. And did you see that worm going in right there? I, th I think you probably got her on the camera, but there was a worm here. There's worms over here. I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna pull on this. So we are getting, it's showing some movement here or a crack in there like compaction. But let's pull it this way. It's breaking sideways. And different soil structures can break differently. So it doesn't always mean exactly the same thing if you have a completely different soil. But let's just break this open. But see how it's it's crumbling everywhere? Instead of like a, some of those others, it was really hard. Once you broke it, you'd poke on it. There was none of that breaking. See, this clump's holding together. It's a little bit more compacted. But see, I'm trying to break it. It's breaking off where my thumb is. Okay, see, that's showing more type of a compaction. But if I push it, it's... Yeah, so there, that spot was more compacted. So this soil has a ways to go. But remember that other one? I was banging on it, and it wouldn't... It wouldn't um, break. And so here we have a nice big earthworm here. Ooh, look right there. He's pooping right now. Okay, so that's an earthworm casting. It just came out of him. Now this is going to go viral to see a worm poop. Ooh, he's pooping right now. Check that out. Wow. He's creating an earthworm casting right there. So that's what we want. That's the best thing in the world. And that will be very sanitary. If we put that under the microscope, it's going to be full of microbes, but they will, mo for the most part, they will not be disease causers. In fact, the EPA said you can use earthworms to clean up toxic material because no, that we've never shown in science for diseases to go through an earthworm and survive. But see how this, this whole thing is just falling apart. Even our sub-original soil, the subsoil, it's coming apart. This one's a little more compacted, and you can see that drillosphere right there, that great big hole where the worm, that was an earthworm tunnel. Okay, so this concludes our video today about the shovel test and how to do the shovel test. Hopefully this helps you to have an earthworm poop on your finger.